We are getting ready to go for event number 22, the Women's Collegiate Novice A. And uh, my apologies, there are three heats in this, so the top two finishers, UCLA and Sacramento State, will move forward, while San Diego State will compete with Orange Coast College and others in the petite final. Coming up with event 22, the Women's Collegiate Novice B in lane number one, Oklahoma. Kansas State is in lane two, the University of San Diego in lane three. That will be UC Davis in lane four. Cal, the main campus, will come out of lane five. And Washington State University will be moving out in lane number six. Well, that brings us to the start, the starting line of the second heat of the Women's Collegiate Novice. I think the best, and biggest, and brightest news we have to report right now is that uh, SeaWorld has started their overhead tram. There are no more cormorants strategically placed over the starter's head. Still awaiting alignment. Let me take this opportunity to give a clarification to one of my calls when I call bow to tiller. That is an old reference to when the rudders of the racing shells were actually hung on the back of the boat. The rudder and the tiller, of course, was the top, the steers, the next to the rudder. Those used to be all the way on the back of the boat. Currently, the skag and the rudder is located in the mid deck, halfway uh, on the stern deck, halfway to the rear. So technically, this is a, 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 a bow to stern scenario. I will try to make that correction as we move along, trying to break my old habits. We have an alignment, and the starter is probably knowing her will go to a countdown start pretty soon. Attention! Oh, here we go. Go! And that's a start. This is the second heat of the collegiate, women's collegiate novice event. It is really great to see the new program from Oklahoma University out here. And they are closest to the shore in lane one at 45 and a half level with the University of San Diego. And then we look all the way to the outside at Washington State. Washington State is in lane Six, maintaining about one seat lead. As we come up to 250 meter mark, most crews are settling down. Washington State has established a clear lead of three seats over Oklahoma, which is level with the University of San Diego. Two to advance out of this heat, so we are looking for one, two, and the transfer position between two and three will be tightly contested. Washington State has established itself with bow to stern lead over Oklahoma and University of San Diego, which are level for the second position. They maintain about five seat lead over Kansas State and UC Davis. Cal lightweights are approximately one, one length back behind Davis. Approaching the 500 meter mark, you have to look outside to lane six. The first across is Washington State, followed by Oklahoma, two seats over the University of San Diego. And then we look to UC Davis, which is a seat over Kansas State. Kansas State is bow to stern over Cal Lightweights. 
So the final call as we approach the 700 meter mark outside, they're stroking very strong and long, is Washington State University inside Oklahoma. Then lane three in third place is San Diego State, followed by K-State, which is able to push through UC Davis and Cal Lights. That's your call from the 700 meter mark. Event number 22, the Women's Collegiate Novice B. This is the second of three, so the top two will move on. The next two will go to the petite final, and the third tier will be contested by the final two crews in our sixth crew race. In lane number one, currently in second position is Oklahoma. Kansas State is in lane number two. The University of San Diego in lane number three, followed by the University of California Davis in lane four. Uh, Cal Berkeley lightweight in lane five, and our current leader on the far outside in lane number six is Washington State University. Second of three, as we mentioned. And Michelle, you might comment on the situation when a crew is separated considerably by their immediate competitor in a particular position. Uh, what is the thought process? What do you have to do to keep track of what's going on? Well, if you're the rower, you just keep rowing. It's not your job to keep track of what's going on. It's your job to do what the coxswain tells you and to be very smooth. But your ears tune up. And the coxswain has to work against the tendency to parallax. They have to be able to look straight across and accurately evaluate where that other crew is without immediate visual reminders. It is a skill, and coxswains do get better with it as they progress. It's easier to race against someone you could see and hear. And it's easier to judge your position against them. So in a separated event like this where the people are uh, racing for position are widely separated, it's very challenging to stay aware of your relative positions and keep the fire on. Well, we'll see how this works out as Washington State has pulled out to a rather considerable lead on the far outside as the first two, two crews are going forward. I notice as I'm talking, Kansas State had to make a course correction. Apparently, they were troubled by the wind blast that comes underneath the Ingram Street Bridge. They've now righted the situation, but they did lose momentum, and that gave the opportunity for the University of San Diego and also uh, Cal Davis to make a move up on them and dropping uh, their crew back into about that fourth position. So an unfortunate turn of events if you're a Kansas State fan. Uh, on the far outside, that is Washington State. <laughs> And they are certainly putting the pedal to the metal and really moving along quite well here. One of the first crews that we've seen in the far outside lanes today that has done very well. Uh, they are looking to hold off or stay with, if nothing else, the University of San Diego in lane number three. And then we've got to drop back to Oklahoma because Oklahoma is going to be fighting it out with apparently now Kansas State getting back into the hunt and the University of California Davis also. The lightweight crew from Berkeley is uh, uh, checking in to the trailing position. All the way outside is Washington State. Along the shoreline, this is Oklahoma having moved in with about 500 meters to go in the race. Uh, they will be watching in lane number three, the University of San Diego, uh, with uh, Kansas State not really out of it completely, and then outside to Cal Davis, and farther outside to the trailing crew from Cal, the lightweight crew. But very comfortably in the lead is Washington on the far outside. Oklahoma has come back and is pulling hard, so we might have a heck of a finish here between the University of San Diego and Oklahoma to see who moves on to join UCLA and Sac State in the grand final. Right now, Oklahoma has the edge, but University of San Diego is not going away, and surprisingly, Kansas State has kind of stayed in the hunt as well, with Davis on the outside. Doesn't look like they will have it, and trailing is the Cal lightweight crew. 
All the way on the outside, this is Washington State with a tremendous amount of open water back to their next competitor, Oklahoma. But Oklahoma needs to be concerned about the University of San Diego to see who goes on. It is currently Oklahoma with the upper hand along the shoreline, and they have about a half boat length lead over the Toreros from the University of San Diego. So unless something major happens, it looks like UC, check that, University of San Diego will go to the petite final, and that will send Oklahoma into the final along with our unofficial winner, Washington State. Next up will be Kansas State going to the petite final and then looking to the outside to UC Davis and the Cal lightweight crew uh, finishing in that uh, fifth and sixth position. Once again, the unofficial finish for the women's collegiate novice B. This is the second of three. Moving on will be first place Washington State, Oklahoma in second, moving to the petite final will be University of San Diego and Kansas State, and then come University of California Davis and a Cal Lightweight Crew. As we watch the Cal Lightweights finish up here, we'd like to mention that we have available on this site a DVD of each individual race. If you have a loved one or someone of interest in the race, please go down and get one of those DVDs. They're inexpensive, considering the wonderful camera locations that we have here at the 2010 True Classic. Event number 23, the Women's Collegiate Novice C, the third of three lane assignments, USC in lane one, St. Mary's in lane two, Loyola Marymount in lane three, Minnesota in lane four, UOP in lane five, and the University of California Santa Barbara is in lane six. And we are at the start, awaiting the third final heat.